Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining me this afternoon for my latest COVID-19 update. As of now, over 2 million people in Massachusetts are fully vaccinated and another 1 million are half vaccinated. This Monday, everyone 16 or older became eligible for a vaccine, which equates to another 1.7 million people. With this, it is fully expected that over the course of the next 20 to 30 days, there will be a lot of traffic. One positive in some of the research that has been done is that people in Massachusetts want to get vaccinated. There is very little hesitancy here. If you are now eligible to book an appointment, here are some helpful tips. If you haven't already, you should pre-register online for an appointment at one of the mass vaccination sites or our regional collaborative sites. If you have pre-registered for your appointment, check your phone and email because notifications are going out and you'll have 24 hours to book it. In our region, we have the Lower Merrimack Valley Regional Collaborative being held at Amesbury High School. The clinic effort started in January with vaccinating our first responders and residents age 75 and old, older. Over time, the clinic has grown to include all phases of the vaccination plan, and our team has increased operations to include all people who are eligible. This past Sunday, the clinic surpassed 19,000 total vaccinations. This is a good resource for our local region, and I encourage you to take advantage of it. You should also check availability at hundreds of smaller sites, such as pharmacies. Demand for the vaccine is still greater than the supply in Massachusetts, so be prepared to wait several weeks for that first appointment. If you can't get an appointment yet in Massachusetts, you could also try New Hampshire, which dropped its residency requirement Monday, allowing anyone to get a shot no matter what state they live in. Massachusetts will need to vaccinate 4.1 million residents to reach herd immunity. As defined by the CDC, that means we will be at a point that a sufficient portion of the population is immune to the disease through vaccination or had a COVID illness to make it spread from person to person unlikely. We have this attainable goal in our site and we just need to follow through in this final stretch. However, now is not the time to stop being careful. I also would like to remind everyone that we still have a mask mandate in all public places, whether indoors or outdoors, and in particular, a dedicated max mask zone in the downtown. We will continue to follow the state's guidelines to combat the spread of the virus. We understand that everyone has worked so hard. The vaccines are here and the weather is getting warmer, except for today. But until more people are fully vaccinated, we will follow the state before easing any requirements. This includes mask wearing in public. Your compliance is needed and appreciated. We are now in the midst of our busy budgeting season for the city. My staff and I have been working on the department operating budgets for fiscal year 2022 since the beginning of the calendar year. The final budget will be submitted at the City Council's May 10th meeting. Additionally, the updated five-year capital improvement plan for 2022 through 2027 was presented to the City Council and under review by the Committee on Budget and Finance. A key project is a major drainage and infrastructure upgrade in the Phillips Drive area, where the neighborhood has been dealing with flooding and poor drainage for decades. Design work is expected to be completed in June with bids to be issued in July and contract awarded in August. Work is slated to begin in the fall. The capital plan also includes 500,000 for sidewalk repairs and $1.5 million for roads as we continue to prioritize these needs. We know there are streets and sidewalks throughout the city in disrepair, and we continually look for additional resources to do more of this work. 
in reviewing this comprehensive capital plan, you can see there are many, many projects identified in addressing infrastructure and other needed improvements in the city. Our five-year plan helps to identify and prioritize these projects with potential funding resources. As the warmer weather is arriving, thoughts are turning to summer and many organizations are navigating the possibilities of what they can do as restrictions are lifted. With more and more people becoming vaccinated and the travel season looking like a more realistic possibility, we can expect to see more visitors coming to Newburyport this summer. We are working to bring back our economy and supporting all sectors, arts and culture, restaurants, retail, and small businesses in our downtown. We continue our close partnership with the Chamber of Commerce to welcome visitors back to our shores and downtown to once again enjoy our vibrant community. The Chamber is holding their annual meeting this year and I invite all to join via Zoom at 5.30 p.m. on April 28th. I would also like to offer my sincerest thanks to Frank Cousins for his leadership of the Chamber for the past four years and welcome Kathleen O'Connor Ives as the new president. We are also participating in the Massachusetts State Local Rapid Recovery Program to help our downtown and commercial district develop a post-COVID economic recovery plan. The plan will include analysis and exploration of challenges, barriers, strategies, and actions with a focus on developing tactical and strategic project recommendations to meet our recovery goals. An important component to this program is to get the valuable input of our business establishments located in Newburyport, including all of our for-profits and non-profit organizations. We really need your help in completing a short survey about the impacts of COVID on your business and your opinion regarding potential strategies to support your business and for making improvements in our city. Please go to cityofnewburyport.com and click on downtown business survey link located in the home page to complete the survey. Outdoor seating for our restaurants was so well received last season and will continue this year and into the future. The new parklets are close to completion with planters being added next week. The intersection of Pleasant Street and State Street has new traffic signals and the upgrade to the handicap ramps and adjacent brick sidewalks will be completed by the end of the month. The upgrades are made possible from a shared streets grant of 260,000 from the state. Other current work in the city includes the return of the state contractor on the Safe Routes to School project to resume sidewalk, sidewalk work and some landscaping, as well as mill and overlay of High Street for completion of this job. Today and tomorrow, and tomorrow, the contractor will be milling the half-mile section of High Street between Ting and Buck Street. There are message boards on the street and detours while the work is underway. A temporary centerline marking will be done this Friday after the milling, and the final paving for this section is scheduled for next Thursday, April 29th. We understand this creates traffic and road delays for the residents in this area, area, and we thank you for your cooperation during this time it has taken to complete this very important work. The city is also seeking a location for a permanent home for our youth services department. The ideal site would offer 6,000 to 8,000 square feet of programming and administrative space with parking and outdoor play space. The site would ideally also include a gymnasium. The city is interested in exploring options that could include acquiring land and real estate as well. We have launched a community survey seeking public input. The survey asked members of the community to select from a list of potential sites or to share any other locations that they believe would be a good fit for the youth service center. It's essential that we identify a location that will suit the department's programs, services and initiatives and so we are hopeful that this survey will shed light on additional locations that can be considered moving forward. 
This is going to be a true community effort, and we look forward to taking the next step for this project. For those who may still be seeking emergency rental assistance, the Department of Housing and Community Development has launched the Emergency Rental Assistance Program, a new state funding mechanism to disperse state and federal funding resources for tenants and landlords to avoid evictions and help maintain household stability throughout the COVID-19 emergencies. Renters and landlords may receive up to 12 months of assistance for past due rent, plus up to three months of future rent. For assistance, please call 211 or go to their website directly at mass.gov forward slash guidelines forward slash facing eviction we can help. Along with benefits, Tenants and landlords may be able to access free legal and medi mediation services. For more information is available at evictionlegalhelp.org. Our schools will be fully reopened next week, following this week's April school vacation. Unfortunately, we recently had a small cluster of COVID-19 cases among our high school students. 13 positive COVID-19 cases were identified. However, it's important to note that the infections did not take place within the school building. The cases were identified through the district's pool testing program. Some of the cases were from multiple scenarios, workplace affiliation, family member spread, social gatherings, and outside activities and recreation. The good news is that we have not had in-school spread of the virus because of our protocols, procedures, and safety measures that are in place. In addition, the district's pool testing system has been instrumental in picking up asymptomatic cases. The testing program is voluntary, but we hope this recent cluster will encourage more students to sign up for the program. These positive cases and others identified by our health department since April 8th bring our new cases to 63, still keeping a low positivity rate of 1.56%, but a stark reminder that this virus is still amongst us. And lastly, today we celebrate Earth Day. Every year on April 22nd, Earth Day marks the anniversary of the birth of this modern environmental movement that began in 1970. This day is observed annually to acknowledge the global climate crisis, which is in an, in an alarming state and needs our immediate attention. The Earth Day theme for 2021 is restore our world which examines natural processes, emerging green technologies, and innovative thinking that can help restore the world's ecosystems. Thank you to all who are in the community today doing local cleanups of their choosing and recognition of Earth Day. Thank you and enjoy your weekend.